Hello everyone and welcome to this week's episode of Telegraph Herald More Than The Score. I'm sports editor Jim Leitner filling in for Steve Ortman who I believe is still busy cleaning up after all the tricksters in his neighborhood wreaked havoc on his house because he wasn't giving up good enough candy. Yeah. Uh, I'm joined this week by Brendan West, our volleyball guru, who's going to talk a little bit about state volleyball coming up next week. We have a couple of familiar teams returning to Cedar Rapids uh, for the state tournament, uh, beginning with Dubuque Wallard, which is, uh, it seems like they're every, they're every year, Brendan. Uh, what can you tell me about this year's run to the state tournament for Dubuque Wallert? Well, I mean, uh, you know, every every single state tournament run that I've I've been a part of with this team, uh, it's been a little bit different. Um, the first one I covered, uh, in which Mackenzie May won the state championship, um, you know, there was um, uh, a lot of juniors on that squad, and Mackenzie May uh, wound up being state player of the year and just kind of took over in the end. Uh, last year, senior heavy team, they get a new addition in Aaliyah Carter, and she she once again takes over in the end. Um, but lots of experience on this squad. Lots of turnover on this year's team, but uh, behind Aaliyah Carter, man, uh, they they get the job done again. They're going to their third straight uh, Class 4A state uh, tournament. Um, they are the two-time defending champions, and uh, the last time I saw Aaliyah Carter play the way she did on Monday, um, that was at the state championship match. She had 35 kills in last year's state finals match. This week against Clinton, uh, the number uh, 10 team in the state, uh, she came up with 28 kills as Waller wins in four sets. A very impressive mark. I was actually able to catch up with Aaliyah, and she actually kind of threw it back to one of those familiar faces from Waller's past. You know, the last point I was thinking of Mackenzie May when she put it down in the back row the first time they won state. I was like, oh my gosh, I can do it too. Yeah. So that was what's going through my head. So when I got it, I was super excited. Awesome. You know, uh, Waller, uh, you were at state last year. Um, and then uh, you guys are seeking that three-peat and everything. Um, how does it feel just to clinch, though, and get through this? That was a pretty tough Clinton team tonight. It feels really good. I think it really gave our team that extra boost that we needed, you know, making it to state, but we know that we're not done yet. So, mm -hmm. um, Is there anything to be said? You know, I mean, this is you've had two pretty tough matches here in the regionals and everything. That's got to have you guys battle-tested for state, right? I mean, do, do you feel pretty well prepared given what you guys have gone through? Yeah, I mean, we've been playing more as a team, and we know what we have to do, so we just have to do it. At last year's uh, state tournament, that was probably one of the best clutch performances by any player in, in Aaliyah Carter in that championship match. Um, again, this is a little bit different this year. See, uh, Wallert's really not the number one seed. They're not probably, mm -hmm. well, they're probably among the favorites. But where exactly is Wallert seeded, and who are going to be the teams to beat down there? Well, so Wallert is uh, the fourth seed overall. They, they drew number five seed Independence. Um, I think, uh, you know, it, it's difficult always at this time of year to judge where Wallert really is at. Um, just because they play that really tough Mississippi Valley Conference schedule um, that always leads to a few losses. It's good in the long run because it, it makes them sharp when they drop down to Class 4A for that tournament run. Um, the team that beat is actually a team that Wallard has faced fairly recently, and that's Sergeant Bluff Luton. Um, Luton took uh, Wallert to five sets last year in that in that classic championship match of 2017. Wallert won it. Um, they actually, Sergeant Bluff, has drawn the number one seed. So uh, they're definitely the team to beat. There's other uh, really top-notch teams down there as well, familiar faces across the board. You've got your Cedar Rapids Xaviers. Um, you've got your West Delawares. Um, the, the, I would say the 4A field is pretty wide open, and it seems like it's that way every single year. Uh, just because pretty much all eight of those teams that are down there at state can hang with each other. So um, I think Wallert stands as good a chance as all eight of those teams, obviously. Um, they've got that pedigree. This is their 31st state tournament run, their third straight state tournament run, and they are back-to-back -back champs with uh, one of the best players in the state. But, you know, no no road to the championship is easy. So uh, we'll, we'll see how things go, and uh, best of luck to the Golden Eagles. A little bit different uh, complexion to another one of our teams that's going to be qualifying for the state volleyball tournament. That's Dyersville Beckman. Uh, it seems like that's a team that's a little bit more balanced. Mm -hmm. uh, it has weapons all over the floor as opposed to that one 
Uh, one player like Aaliyah Carter, who's the, really the go-to player. Tell me a little bit about Dyersville Beckman and their run to the state tournament. Well, I mean, uh, I, I've had the privilege of watching Beckman uh, this year all season long, and I mean, they, uh, I, I, I can't even really describe it. They, they just find this way in every single match to go on these just heartbreaking runs for the opponents. I mean, we're talking eight, nine, ten straight points um, that they score. They did it again against Durant on Tuesday to clinch their state tournament uh, bid, um, sweeping Durant. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, they just, they just, they're so balanced, and they're they are so they're so well coached and 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 just disciplined in every facet of the game. We're talking about blocking, setting, hitting digging, serving. I mean, they just, they just, they are definitely a complete team. They're definitely a balanced team. And um, a big reason for why they drew the top draw in the Class 2A tournament is because um, they're just so thoroughly good at every single level. Uh, so um, it's been a treat to watch them. And I'm definitely not surprised that they're going back to state um, for the second time in as many years. Kind of a different uh, feel to this tournament. It's one of the first times in a long, long time where the number one ranked team is not in the state tournament <laughs> field. Uh, obviously a big upset last night. Talk a little bit about that and that's why Beckman kind of <laughs> fell into the number one seed because the actual the number one ranked team mm -hmm. lost in the regional final. Yeah, uh, it, it was it was pretty nuts. Um, I'm you know I'm I'm at I'm at Anamosa where Beckman clinched and I'm 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 filing my story and everything and all of a sudden you know the Beckman players are still wandering around and all of a sudden I hear Ellie Bildstein and and Heather Bockenstead and everybody they just start erupting for joy. I'm like, what's going on here? <laughs> and that was the moment they found out that top-ranked Grundy Center had actually been upset by Wilton in four sets, um, punching Wilton's ticket. Uh, Grundy Center was a team that, you know, it, it, I, I felt very confident about Beckman's abilities to get to state this year, but Grundy Center was definitely a team that I kind of circled and was like, oh, man, like, like I think that the Blazers are going to have a really tough time with them. Um, now that they're not in the tournament, I mean, you still have your heavy hitters. You have your Western Christian, um, which has won uh, the second most state championships behind only Wallert. Um, you have Dyke New Hartford, which is the defending champion in 2A. Um, so uh, obviously this is, um, this is, it's still, it's a wide open field, but it's still a tough field. Um, after, after Tuesday's match, I was able to actually catch up with Heather Bach instead for the first time in a while. Uh, she had a little bit of a press uh, ban because of some of the things she said to me earlier this season, but um, because of all the excitement, we were able to catch up, and uh, she she really described the, the desire of this Trailblazers team to get back to state and ultimately to push past the quarterfinals. Can you describe how badly this team wanted to get back to state? Um, really badly. This is half our goal. Three of our six games we wanted to win, they're one, so we're halfway there. This is just a nice step. I mean, we were so motivated before the game. It's like, most teams would be like, oh, we made it to state once, that's good. Most teams don't do that, but no, we're, we aren't settling just for state. We're going to keep going. We're just happy. Troutman's going back to state. We're so excited. Awesome. Um, what do you think was the big difference for you guys tonight, uh, specifically? Um, um, I think we had a little more experience coming in. You could see, even last year when we were coming to the same exact place, we were all jittery, nervous. Before the game, we were in the locker room, dancing, excited. Everyone was just happy to be here, just happy to keep going with our goal. We were, we're experienced, we're seniors, we just, we knew we could get it done, and that's what we did. So when uh, Beckman, even though they're the top seed, um, they, they do open the state tournament quarterfinals against number eight Wilton, obviously that team that upset Grundy Center. So um, definitely, I, I mean, just like the 4A field with Wallert, a wide open field there in 2A with some heavy hitters, but um, obviously Beckman is feeling really, really good right now. Uh, not good. crossing the river, the Mississippi River uh, to Wisconsin, we have another team from Southwest Wisconsin who qualified for the state tournament over there. Talk a little bit about River Ridge and the run that the Timberwolves have been on to make it to Eshwabanon, Wisconsin, <laughs> and the Rush Center up near Green Bay uh, for the state tournament. <laughs> well, um, you know, uh, uh, River Ridge has yet to drop a match this season on the 24-0 entering this state tournament. And, uh, you know, they've been 
kind of like Beckman, and and you know what, uh, kind of like Waller too. They've been very thorough. But uh, River Ridge, I've when I've watched them, the thing that immediately sticks out is their two middles. You have Skylar White and Taylor Langmeyer, who um, definitely do a bulk of the damage for them, and they're very very effective. Um, this is the first state uh, tournament that uh, River Ridge will be going to on Friday, and um, you know. It, it, they're definitely. I mean, it's 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 like our our girls on the Iowa side. I mean, it's a pretty wide open field. They drew against uh, Clayton, uh, which is twenty eight and three, so definitely an impressive team there. Um, but um, obviously, up there in Patch Grove, people are really excited about what these Timberwolves are capable of. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Brendan. You can look for his coverage in the Telegraph Herald over the next week or so. Uh, that should pretty much do it for this edition of Telegraph Herald. More than the score. I'm sports editor Jim Leitner. This is Brendan West.